that's not true for our next guest, Bertie Gregory, who grew up inspired by David Attenborough and his incredible documentaries. Yeah, Bertie finally got to work with the National Treasure in 2019 when he got his dream job filming the Nurture series Seven Worlds, One Planet. And now the 28-year-old is taking viewers on his own adventures to spectacular corners of the world in a brand new series. Let's have a little look. Wow. Jealous much. <laughs> Oh, wow. Bertie, that looks amazing. Uh, let me ask you, because everyone wants to know, how did you start? How did you get into mm -hmm. doing this? Because it's the most perfect job, surely. Yeah, very lucky. Uh, so I started out, I guess, spending a lot of time in the sea. My family are obsessed with water sports. And I think when you spend a lot of your childhood bobbing up and down on a surfboard off the coast of Cornwall, you're going to get an appreciation for being outside. And I think I, I realised that, yeah, the wildlife that was all around me. I didn't grow up in a particularly wild place near Reading. Um, there was some farmer's fields and I got to know the farmer and he kind of let me explore, explore the fields. And yeah, I just learned by trial and error how to sneak up on different animals, you know, foxes, badgers, kingfishers, all the kind of British classics. And uh, yeah, it went from there, really. So when does your love for wildlife turn into photography? Yeah, so everyone, when I was growing up, thought I was a complete freak because I'd just <laughs> sneak off for hours on end by myself and try and get close to a badger or a fox, which isn't generally a normal thing to do as a teenager. <laughs> and I realised that if I took pictures of what I was seeing, that was a great way to kind of channel my obsession. Yeah. But it was always well, also a really good way to get other people excited about what I'd seen and kind of explain where I'd been. Yeah. Um, and I think kind of a switch went off and I went, hang on a second, this is pretty cool. And then at the time, I was watching things like the David Attenborough documentaries, and that was always the, I guess, the, the dream. So you started off behind the camera. You started off as a filmmaker and a documentary maker. Totally. And then you slowly kind of slipped in front of the screen, or is it a perspective from you as a filmmaker that has made you so successful? Uh, I, well, always my, I guess, my day job is, is behind the camera mm -hmm. filming the wildlife. That's what I really love doing. Um, but when you go in front of the camera, I think you get uh, an extra level of... of Pay. Uh, <laughs> speak for yourself. Um, <laughs> you get an extra level of ability to, I guess, get people excited about what you're excited yeah, about. Yeah, of course. Uh, and being able to do that is, is really cool. So, as you said, you grew up obsessed. That was your passion. And looking up to people like David Attenborough, who is national treasure, we adore him, don't we? In 2016, you actually get to work with him. What's that like? I mean, I can imagine totally surreal for you. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the first time I met him was actually really embarrassing um, because we were in Iceland filming the opening scene to the whole series, Seven mm -hmm. Worlds, One Planet. And uh, I had quite a cool job. I was filming the helicopter aerials of him on the beach wow. for the opening scene. And I thought, that's a pretty cool mm -hmm. first way to meet Attenborough. I was lying underneath the helicopter, fiddling with a half oh, yeah. a million pound camera system. I was like, he's going to think I'm cool, right? <laughs> so he comes over and I'm introduced. And uh, I was also flying drones around him for that shoot. and. Uh, the director, Johnny, said to David, oh, Bertie's going to be flying drones around you. And the Gatwick drone scare had just happened. Oh, gosh. And David very quickly made a funny joke and was like, oh, that wasn't you doing the drones at Gatwick. And I misheard him and didn't really get oh, the no. joke. And I thought he was asking where I'd flown in from. So I was like, no, actually, I came in from Heathrow. <laughs> oh, gosh. And it was just really awkward and I'll never get that moment yeah. back. <laughs> But, but the thing is, when, when you're... When you're they in say the... don't meet your idol. Exactly. Something will happen, something will happen. But when you're in the presence of greatness, because he is a, a national mm -hmm. treasure, uh, it must be so tempting to kind of try and pick bits of information from him, lots of nuggets of, of what's made him successful to use for yourself in the future. Yeah, I think generally when you're around people that are of that level, yeah, I guess you can try and glean information by asking questions, but it's more, to me, just you kind of absorb how they are as a person. Yeah. And given his career and the knowledge that he has, just his, his sharpness and ability to engage with the camera, and that was, a, that was so special well, I suppose you're like see. a sponge, aren't you, just absorbing all of it. So this series, your series starts next week, is that right, on the 8th of September yeah. on Disney+, Plus, which is nice because what I love for my children is that's bringing a whole sort of new audience to see somebody young front and centre. I think that that's really nice and really positive. Yeah, not only that, but on the banner, your face is going to be next to the Mandalorian. <laughs> Is that? Yeah, it's pretty surreal. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of stuff on Disney Plus, but just like like Rosh said, tell us more about your mm -hmm. epic adventure. So I guess what we've tried to do is is we combine the what we hope is the highest level of wildlife film. So you're going to get 
crazy wildlife spectacle. Here we go. Beautiful oh, shots. Um, this is in Antarctica with, with fin whales, the world's second biggest animal. They're about 27 metres long. Um, but what we can do with the format of this series is combine the wildlife with the adventure. Mm -hmm. So you know the last 10 minutes of the Attenborough series yeah. where they show you how they did it? This is the whole show. Oh, uh, right. It's that combined. And what that allows us to do is, is well, I mean, the fin whales is a great example. If I told you that a fin whale is 27 metres long, how big is that? Well, as soon as you see me next to a fin whale, suddenly you, you know can, how big Yeah, it is. you can bring that to life. And what I love is the bits that we showed in the trailer is you, you get those beautiful shots, but then you also get a bit of selfie moment from you and you're like, oh my gosh, we're going in. <laughs> it's kind of nice to see that real take on it. I think the other thing that we get to do by having people in the show is we get to talk about these animals and these amazing wildlife events within a bigger environmental context. Because mm -hmm. so often we have to, you know, breeze over the fact that the natural world's in trouble. And it is, and we talk about that, but there's also some really great positive stories. Yeah. Like those, those fin whales, we filmed in Antarctica, the biggest gathering of fin whales ever filmed. Wow. Um, and that is a really positive conservation success story because they've, they've rebounded from commercial whaling since the ban on that in the 70s. And, oh, so and now there's more whales there than, yeah. than there have been for 100 years. And that's, that's pretty exciting in a world full of doom and gloom. Uh, yeah, we'll we'll, we'll take any positive. <laughs> yeah. Well, listen, awesome good luck stuff. with it. I hope, so it goes, <laughs> it, I hope it goes well. It seems like you really do have the dream job. Oh, thanks very much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Right. Still